a horrible of, recession or a, or a horrible series of rate increases? Well, listen, I think there, there's been very few instances in which inflation got to something like 8 or 9 percent where the Fed was able to bring it down without causing a recession. Um, 1994 is often used as, as kind of the soft landing scenario, uh, but um, that inflation only got to 3 percent. So it seems to me the operating assumption should be that you're likely to get a recession in 2023. In a typical recession, earnings fall about 30 percent. And, and, and maybe it'll be a little bit different this time um, if, um, if because of higher inflation. But still, that, that's not a particularly great development for uh, for stocks. Well, it's just that last week, both sides got more strident. I don't know whether you whether you noticed. We had uh, Mark Mobius saying we may need a, a series of one to two point interest rate hikes. And then we had the, the CEO of FedEx talking about a global uh, recession. Those two things are diametrically opposed, or at least, you know, if we did have a series of rate increases like that, can you imagine the, the severity or depth of, of the recession? So is it somewhere in the middle? We need, do you think we need a couple of 75 basis point increases and then we sure. orchestrate what could be construed as a medium soft landing? Maybe we'll get lucky, uh, Joe, but I think, listen, I think once the decision, you have to go back to the root causes, in my opinion. And so once we made the decision to close down the entire global economy and we fixed that, quote unquote, with $5 trillion in fiscal spending we didn't have and an increase in $5 trillion on the Fed's balance sheet, the chances of sticking the landing, uh, I think, went out the window. I, I think uh, th this is the, uh, the chances of a graceful exit from the amount of, uh, in my opinion, excessive um, stimulus that we provided for the economy after we closed the economy down, I think are very low. And so, you know, maybe uh, there, there are good things that can happen. Uh, certainly, uh, I think peace uh, between Russia and Ukraine w would help. Uh, I, I also think it would help if we stopped spending money we didn't have um, in the United States. I'm not sure the fiscal response over the last year has been particularly helpful. And so, I, you know, I have to say I'm not particularly optimistic we can, we can nuance this. And I, I'm, I think the Fed is in a very difficult position because its primary role is to provide for price stability. And in this instance, I think it's going to be very, very hard to achieve without a recession. Uh, hopefully, again, we can get lucky. We could have good policies that, that can soften the blow. Um, but I also think that we have some bad policies here, particularly on energy policy, that are going to make the situation much worse uh, globally. So I, I want to be optimistic, but I'm finding it increasingly hard to do so. So you mentioned five trillion. What 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 is your price tag for what we've done just since we did the five trillion? Just in the last three bills that we've gotten, it's at least another trillion, don't you think? That is at at, at least. I mean, the the last big bill was March. Uh, well, uh, it's the last. Uh, over trillion dollar bill was March of, of 2021, uh, as we know, and that was $1.3 trillion. Now you're looking at uh, between student loan forgiveness and uh, the Inflation Reduction Act. I, I've seen estimates on student loan forgiveness Chips that, that Chips range Act. from, you know, to $200 billion to a trillion. Yeah. And uh, then you're looking at four or $500 trillion. So it's a lot of dough, a lot of money. Right.